typically gets referenced the most in canola uh, is boron. And I, I, what are your guys' thoughts on boron experiences and, and all that? Uh, let's, let's talk about it. I, I'll start. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know boron is always the mo most popular micronutrient to talk about in canola because we know that boron is important at flowering for pollen formation and we see a lot of flowers in canola. Um, it's hard to miss. So um, that's why it's probably the top of mind for a lot of people. And boron, it seems that it's more readily accessible with the products available out there for growers to try and, and become comfortable using it. Um, and canola is the highest user of boron out of all crops. Um, yes, it's in grams, it's smaller amounts, which is why it's a micro, but it's still important, it's still needed. If, um, if there's no boron in that plant, there's so many other functions that just can't happen without it, right? So mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think it's just, it was um, an easy conversation because boron is needed for flowering and we see a lot of flowers in canola. Start, best way to start the conversation with a guy. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. So, so the question becomes, and this is what I hear a lot of: in, 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 Do I put it on at flowering only, or, or when do I when do I put it on? When when's it needed? So, funny thing about boron is it's actually required at all stages of that plant growth. Um, flowering is just the one that we're always talking about because it is the demand for it definitely increases at that stage. But we need it right at root development when uh, that little seedling is starting to take the roots out and explore the soil around it. We need the boron for cell structure. Uh, standability, actually, I know potassium is always the one we talk about, but we need boron for that. And then at the end for grain fill and uh, quality, it's all, it's very important for cell structure, making sure those cells are formed properly. Without them, we'll start getting, um, like I said, some lodging or some poor graded um, seeds at the end. Yeah, so uh, what I'm hearing is 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 more of a boron management plan. If uh, it should be looked at, um, making sure that that you're getting some down at, at seeding time uh, to to really start it off, and then being able to to feed it as we go along. And and I know one one thing I I like to tell guys is is with any uh, well with all the micronutrients. Um, you want to you want to get it on before that peak demand. I know that that flowering tends to have a lot of demand for boron, but but so does the the bolting and canola and and when when that starts taking off, um, you want to have the nutrition there and available. You don't want to have it suffering or or waiting for some to show up in the soil. Um, so you want to have it there. So I, I think a boron management plan is really important to to address it early on and then have have some available throughout the, the growing season. Every every opportunity that you're going over with that that sprayer is an opportunity to to apply some boron nutrition. Jerry, Mark, thoughts on that? I'll throw uh, I'll throw some uh, physiological sense into the equation. <laughs> um, um, boron does get a lot of attention and it's and it's one too that sometimes uh, the timing as Allison said sometimes the timing of when we apply the boron gets thrown into the equation and and uh, we kind of just said that we need we need it a little bit of it and often and uh, boron's a unique nutrient <clears throat> it's very mobile in the soil and it's not so mobile in the plant and that makes sense because boron as Allison said is a structural nutrient um, it's part of cell division it's part of uh, providing structure in the plant it's integrated into the tissue um, which is why it's not very mobile so that's why we have the approach as you say Cody a, a boron program a conversation about feeding that crop boron as we go so another thing that kind of plays into this is how it gets into the root system 80% of the boron that goes into a into the plant is only by mass flow. So it's a nutrient that is very, very uh, influenced by environmental factors, dryness, um, wetness, um, the capacity for a plant to take, to take water up. Um, consequently, water regulation in the plant is managed by potassium. So here we are slipping into, uh, <laughs> into the <laughs> potassium conversation again. So here we are folks, the metal regulation um, by potassium and, uh, and how that regulates uh, boron uptake. Consequently, all nutrients are taken up um, in the solutions. So potassium, uh, again, that big bully, um, as, as Jerry says, Jerry, I've stolen your, your analogy, it's great. Um, the, the big bully pushing 
those nutrients and move it on, move it on. Um, so I also want to say also a comment uh, around micronutrient nutrition. And it's another one too I've gotten asked uh, quite frequently in the last few years. Um, I want to fix or I want to apply micronutrients. But first, I want to apply phosphorus and potassium and sulfur and nitrogen first off. And, and uh, it goes back to, again, Jerry, I'm stealing from you here. Um, it's about balanced nutrition and balancing the diet. So whether we're growing a 26 bushel canola, a 40 or a 60, it still requires the same ratios of macro and micronutrients. So if you think of um, plant physiological efficiency, um, if we just apply one or two things and then, oh, well, now that I'm growing a larger yield environment, well, now maybe I'll apply those micronutrients. And in fact, I think we should be applying them all the time. So a conversation of how to integrate the micronutrient into the conversation of with my macros. And uh, this is where, you know, we, we, we have product in Yara that can accomplish that now um, without going to uh, dive into that. But there are ways now we can integrate our macro and micronutrient nutrition at the same time. So um, we can have that conversation now. So I think it's important to note that, oh, well, I, I want to put on the right amount of macronutrients first and then the micro. And I think it's being conflated. We should be doing that all the time with both macro and micro from a plant physiological efficiency standpoint. So tune it out with physiology. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. The the physiology guy always always can count on you to take it there and and uh, speak with fashion around it <laughs> uh, and, and and dumb it down enough for me as well. That that's always a bonus. Um. <laughs> So, okay, let's move on, move on from boron. Uh, what, what do we want to talk about next? Zinc? Can I make one comment on boron? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I never commented, and I like to comment, because I, I always have discussions about the soil tests, and there's enough parts per million and, and stuff on the, on the reef. And I, I think, as you guys will learn, I'm all about analogies. So I, I have a, an analogy that I put in the field when I talk to growers and I said, we're, we're uh, branding cattle and they're going through the chute and you want the hinges to really open and close so they can go through nice. Boron is kind of the protector that rust doesn't grow on, that, uh, on the hinge so that everything can travel as smooth as can be. Nutrients will like to go through the door in the plant the fastest and the, as quick as they can, and they all don't stand in line doing it. So you need the door to open and close so that we can get nutrient travel in the plant. And boron is a very unique nutrient to help that open and close the door when needed. Remember, plants need nutrition, food to live. So there's my second analogy. analogy. <laughs> the, the king That's of analogies good. jumping in. That's good. Love it. That's good. Thanks, Jerry. No, I, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you you added that. That is a, a excellent way to to look at it. Um, 